In this part of the Neurocomputers and Deep Learning course related to biological and artificial neurons, we will cover characteristics of biological neuron. What do you see in this picture? This picture is from the book entitled The Hunting of the Snark by Lewis Carroll. Is there any conventional computer at present with the capability of pursuing both the trees and the baker's transparent head in this picture at the same time? Most probably the answer is no. Although such a visual perception is an easy task for human beings, we are faced with difficulties when sequential computers are to be programmed to perform visual operations. In a conventional computer, usually there exists a single processor implementing a sequence of arithmetic and logical operations, nowadays a speed about 10 to power 9 operations per second. However, this type of devices have ability neither to adapt their structure nor to learn in the way that human beings does. What makes such a difference between brain and conventional computers seems to be neither because of the processing speed of the computers nor because of their processing ability. Today's processors have a speed 10 to do six times faster than the basic processing elements of the brain called neuron. When the abilities are compared, the neurons are much more simpler. The difference is mainly due to the structural and operational trend. While in a conventional computer, the instructions are executed sequentially in a complicated and fast processor. The brain is a massively parallel interconnection of relatively simple and slow processing elements. It is claimed that the human central nervous system is comprised of about 1.3 times 10 to the power 10 neurons, and that about 1 10 to the power 10 of them takes place in the brain. At any time, some of these neurons are firing, and the power dissipation due to this electrical activity is estimated to be in the order of 10 watts. Monitoring the activity in the brain has shown that even when asleep, 5 times 10 to the power 7 nerve impulses per second are being relayed back and forth between the brain and the other parts of the body. This rate is increased significantly when awake. A neuron has a roughly spherical cell body called soma. Here is the soma. The signals generated in soma are transmitted to other neurons through an extension on the cell body called axon or nerve fibers. This is the axon. Another kind of extensions around the cell body like bushy trees is the dendrites, which are responsible for receiving the incoming signals generated by other neurons. These extensions are called dendrites. Also, we have dendrites here. An axon having a length varying from a fraction of millimeter to a meter in human body prolongs from the cell body at the point called axon hillock. So this is the starting point of the axon, which is called axon hillock. The other end, the axon is separated into several branches, at the very end of which the axon enlarges and forms terminal buttons. So this part is called terminal button or an axon end. Terminal buttons are placed in special structures called the synapses, which are the junctions transmitting signals from one neuron to another. It is shown in this figure. A neuron typically drives 10 to power 3 to 10 to power 4 synaptic junctions. This is the synapse enlarged in the figure. The synaptic vesicles 
whole the several thousands of molecules of chemical transmitters take place in the terminal buttons. When a nerve impulse arrives at the synapse, some of these chemical transmitters are discharged into synaptic cleft, which is a narrow gap between the terminal button of the neuron transmitting the signal and the membrane of the neuron receiving it. In general, the synapsis takes place between an axon branch of a neuron and the dendrite of another one. Although it is not very common, synapsis may also take place between two axons or two dendrites of different cells or between an axon and a cell body. Here, notice that the connection of the axon and not necessarily the beginning of the dendrites, it may be connected at any point on the dendrite. Neurons are covered with a semi-permeable membrane with only 5 nanometer thickness. The membrane is able to selectively absorb and reject ions in the intracellular fluid. The membrane maintains a different ion concentration between the intracellular internal fluid and extracellular external fluid. While the sodium ions are continually removed from the internal fluid to the external fluid, the potassium ions are absorbed from the external fluid in order to maintain an equilibrium condition. Due to the difference in the ion concentrations, inside and outside of the cell membrane become polarized. In equilibrium, the interior of the cell is observed to be 70 millivolts negative with respect to the outside of the cell. The mentioned potential is called the resting potential. A neuron receives input from a large number of neurons via its synaptic connections. Nerve signals arriving at the presynaptic cell membrane cause chemical transmitters to be released into the synaptic cleft. These chemical transmitters diffuse across the gap and join to the postsynaptic membrane of the receptor site. The membrane of the postsynaptic cell gathers the chemical transmitters. This causes either a decrease or an increase in the concentration of the local sodium and potassium depending on the type of the chemicals released into the synaptic cleft. In turn, if solar potential, which is called graded potential, changes. The synapses whose activation cause depolarization of the graded potential are called excitatory synapses. The synapses whose activation cause increase in the polarization of the graded potential are called inhibitory synapses. If the decrease in the neuron polarization is adequate to exceed the threshold at axon hillock, then the neuron fires, that is, generates pulses which are transmitted through axon. Once a pulse is created at axon hillock, it is transmitted through the axon to other neurons. In general, although the depolarization due to a single synapse is not enough to fire the neuron, if some other areas in the membrane are depolarized at the same time by the arrival of neural impulses through other synapses, it may be adequate to exceed the threshold at axon hillock and to fire. In the axon hillock, the excitatory effects result in the interruption of the regular ion transportation through the cell membrane, so that ionic concentrations immediately begin to equalize as ions diffuse through the membrane. In this figure, we are considering transmission of action potential on an axon from left to right. If, if we are considering timing, it goes from right to left. This is the resting potential. If depolarization is large enough, the membrane potential, this is the resting potential. If the depolarization is large enough, the membrane potential at axon hillock eventually collapses and for a short time of period, 
the internal potential becomes positive. The action potential is the name of this brief reversal in the potential, which results in an electric current flowing from the region at action potential to an adjacent axon region with a resting potential. This current causes the potential of the next resting region to change. So the effect propagates in this manner along the axon membrane wall. Once an action potential has passed a given point, it is incapable of being re-excited for a while, which is called refractory period. This is refractory period, and also here, when the signal passed through this point for a while, it cannot be excited. Because the depolarized parts of the neuron are in a state of recovery and cannot immediately become active again, the path of electrical activity always propagates in only forward direction. The previously triggered region then rapidly recovers to the polarized resting state due to the action of the sodium potassium pumps. The refractory period is about one millisecond. And this limits the nerve pulse transmission so that a neuron can typically fire and generate nerve pulses at a rate up to 1,000 pulses per second. Most of the axons are covered by myelin sheet, which is a poor conductor. The myelin sheet is thin at the points called node of Ranvier. At axons with myelin sheet, the action potential is transmitted as depolarization occurs at the nodes of Ranvier's. This happens in a sequential manner so that the depolarization of a node triggers the depolarization of the next node. The nerve impulse effectively jumps from a node to the next along. So the impulse jumps from one of the nodes of the hemisphere to the next one on the axon. It is mostly tempted to compute the signal transmission in the nervous system as having a digital nature in which a neuron is assumed to be either firing or not. However, this conclusion is not that correct because the intensity of a neuron signal is coded in the frequency of pulses. A better conclusion would be to interpret the biological neural system as if using a form of pulse frequency modulation to transmit information.